welcome to another exciting episode of the program Agri Today on ERSN Television, Abuja, Nigeria. I am Amin Khadija Uluwa Twin. On today's episode of the program, we'll be having uh, one powerful guest. We've had him on this program a uh, long time ago, but today is going to be, uh, you know, a more um, educating one as some of what we couldn't touch the last time is what he will be discussing about. And what are we looking at today is the Mambila Electric Power Project. And um, uh, we'll be taking our focus, actually, is not going to be on the power. We'll be looking at the dam and how this would be of um, the prospects it has for agriculture, especially at the dry season farming. Okay, now let's meet our guest. Good afternoon. Good morning. The weather. Good morning. <laughs> okay, so can you uh, just tell us your name? My name is uh, Ahmad Mustafa. I'm the CEO of Hypotech uh, Group, consultant at various levels in the Mambila Hydroelectric Power Project. Uh, with the Chinese uh, Joint Venture Consortium, also with the Presidential Committee for the Northeast Initiative, and subsequently the National Assembly Senate Committee on Local Content. We know that um, the project has been on for a very long time. We don't want to dive into uh, how long the project has been off and all of that. What we're looking at today is um, the prospects for agriculture in Nigeria, especially how these projects, the dams now, will affect Nigeria's economy. So tell us, what, what, what prospect does this whole project has for um, agricultural sector to start with? Okay, um, as you're aware, the Mambela Hydroelectric Power Project uh, has been signed off with a design concept of three dams and an 18 kilometer underground tunnel for water transfer as a design for the generation of 3050 megawatts of hydroelectric power. So it actually three dams in one and uh, rightly so it's the single largest hydropower plant in the country and in sub-Saharan Africa at the moment. So um, going straight to your area of concern, uh, it is uh, captured in two phases. Uh, at this particular point, we are at a stage that we identify as PCA. PCA meaning pre-commencement activities. In engineering terms, you could call them early works. And there are four categories of activity that has been defined and uh, scope determined, which are in the areas of security of the site area, and item number two is uh, more of your area of concern, which is the resettlement of the host communities. And item number three are the access roads, which are in excess of 146 kilometers through 11 different routes. And then the fourth item is the airfield to open up logistic base for the project because the airport only in the state capital, Jalingo, is about eight hour journey to the project site in Gembu, in Sardona local government in Taraba State, Northeast Nigeria. So um, to narrow down uh, to specifics, uh, our primary focus is we are consultant focusing on the implementation of Presidential Executive Order Number 5, which provides for a minimum of 30% capital participation in capital infrastructure projects, uh, which the Mambila project uh, you know, uh, is has captured. So we're working with the National Assembly to focus on, in line with their own constitutional mandate for oversight and appropriation, uh, the project from an end-to-end -end perspective, local participation, which has a lot to do uh, with the item number two in the pre-commencement activity, the resettlement. From our reports, 90% of the host community are agro-allied. And um, so it's a very strategic uh, angle for the project uh, before, during, and after. And in line with the international standards and provisions for resettlement, uh, we're looking at one, the physical aspect, which is relocating you know, the population, and that is in excess of 100,000 people. That's the figure we have on the full growth report of the EIA. And we're resettling about five major towns associated with the project and um, 
the second side of it is the livelihood. Because uh, when you relocate people, they need to have a source of livelihood, you know. Yeah. And uh, so that puts agriculture really as a primary focus. And um, at the moment, uh, engagements with the host community at various levels, with the different private sector uh, uh, proposals, have been in place. And uh, we are at a technical working group that has a subcommittee for implementation. And uh, we are analyzing a PPP template for the execution of the resettlement in line with the local content provisions. So um, at the moment, uh, like what brought us to you at the first instance, uh, from a regulatory framework, we have received a lot of uh, proposals to resettle you know, agricultural activities of various kinds. And uh, we needed to understand the regulatory framework to guide the local companies and the strategic partnerships that were coming in, even from uh, the international community. So uh, we see uh, a potential huge economy coming out of the resettlement plan. And at the moment, uh, just recently last week, uh, part of our local content engagement uh, saw the diaspora as the Nigerian content. If you would recall, Nigeria has been profiled in the US as the most educated immigrant community in the United States. And in line with the coordination of our committee, we have factored in the diaspora, which just last week had the Nigerian Diaspora Investment Summit, which highlighted you know, the potential of huge investments in the agro-allied sector with regards to the resettlement activity of the project which currently at the moment we will say is the main focus at the moment securing the site and the resettlement at the core and um, uh, I can uh, share with you some interesting developments uh, that we have in two aspects uh, number one is um, you might be aware that uh, there is a famous tea brand coming from Taraba, actually in the Mambila axis, which is called the Highland Tea. It's on, on the shelves, so it's, uh, it's, it's uh, I would say it's the best tea in town because, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a product already, it's a local product, and um, the diaspora had expressed interest in partnering to develop that further. And also worthy of note is um, the, the, the Nigerian First Lady is from that uh, uh, corridor. As you know, Taraba was carved out of former Gongola state, which today is Adama state. And it was interesting to note, you know, from her representation that she actually, you know, went to school there and uh, they lived there as a family. And uh, that's a very strategic uh, interface for the project. And uh, we watch as it develops with the interest of the diaspora. Uh, you know, the Chinese also have Chinese tea. So we're looking at a fusion of the local Highland tea and the Chinese tea to come up with a new brand to be called the Mambila tea. And um, also, interestingly, beyond the beverage side of it, the Chinese also have, you know, the medicinal side of tea, which they promote in different brands. It's a global issue now in line with uh, organic uh, medication. Right here in Nigeria, we call it alternative, you know, medicine. And uh, there's a team in place with representation from the Ministry of Health and also uh, the, the, the foundation and also local NGOs in the host community that are fusing together, you know, to come up with this brand. So this summit that just uh, finished uh, this uh, Friday last week and um, we have gotten MOUs and partners in place and this week the Senate is settling back from plenary. We are looking at, you know, from an implementation subcommittee point of view to provide things that are already ready for set for, for activity and uh, those are agro allied uh, activities so that's uh, one item and uh, secondly the the cattle uh, Babila is known you know for the fantastic breed of uh, cattle because of the nature of the terrain and I believe it's one of the reasons why it goes with the slogan of the state nature's gift to the nation. Uh, Mambila had been in a ranch 
concept over 100 years ago because they've got so much good green land that their cows don't need to go places. I think it has to do even with the concept of uh, this uh, ranching by Kemo. So we saw that also very strategic. We've received a lot of proposals. Uh, even people are placing, are trying to partner based on the potential of what they can get from the cows. So uh, that is also an interesting development with uh, the discussions even with legal state government and uh, other international companies that are looking at the entire value chain for the cow, which is the, the beet itself, you know, the milk, the dairy, the skin, etc. So we're very, very optimistic that um, we, we believe the Mambila project has started technically from the local content point of view because these activities need to be in place before the Chinese companies will move in uh, in line with the uh, project requirement. And so we're quite active. At the moment we're dealing with over 15 to 23 MDAs and over 500 private sector companies as an interface for the template for the PPP. Uh, we have structured under the technical working group three subcommittees. The technical subcommittee, the finance subcommittee and this implementation subcommittee which is the third that we're rounding up before the end of this administration. The technical subcommittee is uh, having the NYC as the secretariat and it is uh, chaired by the Power Training Institute. Also, uh, we have a 55,000 workforce potential through the 72 month construction period of the Mambila project. And this we believe will go a long way in creating job employment in various segments of the project. I will limit my conversation to the area that concerns you, which is the agri, and I will take some questions if you have. Okay, yes. Um, I'm looking at the dam. We know that, um, of course, where we have dams, it's, it's an advantage for all season farming. Is this um, this farming activity is not going to hinder um, activities at the dam? Uh, well, um, the project has uh, side by side uh, in line with. Uh, the design concept, the irrigation potentials, very huge irrigation potentials, which are uh, at the moment uh, also been uh, developed. PTDF uh, had been uh, chairing one of our subcommittees and discussions in part of uh, the activities that to develop, you know, in line with the current narrative for renewable energy climate change campaign, uh, studies for part of the irrigation to have plants like Jethropa which could also add to the output through biofuel and even from the cows and the, you know cow dung and the ethanol potential in the agricultural side of uh, you know sugarcane these are all uh, different levels of value chain that are having more attention at the moment yeah. in line with the current uh, global campaign for, for climate change and it would interest you to know that at the moment, the Mambila project is the single largest portfolio for renewable energy that has been signed as a contract in the country ready for implementation. So we're very uh, optimistic looking at uh, to, to key in, in line with Nigeria's uh, being signatory to the Paris Accord and being consistent with all the COP series in Glasgow and in Sharm el Sheikh lately in Egypt to uh, you know make a strong case uh, for the project uh, takeoff. Okay, so how much water? Is this I'm going to knowing that um, you said it's a three in one, it's a three in one, one of its kind and dam. Um, how much water would it, um, you know, contain, conserve? Well, basically, like I said, we are at the design stage of three dams and an 18 kilometer underground tunnel that is supposed to do water transfer. And um, the consultants for the project, uh, Tractable Cordebelia, the French company. Uh, we just did a review from uh, the design perspective and uh, those specifics in terms of the review are yet to be made public and I would like to keep it that way until at least uh, officially the relevant stakeholders make that pronouncement. Okay, so um, if it's where the acidity and the um, you know, cow rearing, is the, do you think there are any other um, cash crops that can grow? in um, the area okay yeah absolutely and also to refer to our visit to your office earlier on the idea was um there were a lot of uh, segments of agriculture that were proposed and uh, having arc been one of the most strategic agency of government that 
is on the regulating side of all the uh, relevant agencies in the agri uh, sector. Uh, we invited them to join the committee and we were very pleased with their response because they selected the executive secretary himself to represent you know, the agency in the committee. And their submissions were, was profound. That's what led uh, you know, to our coming to visit your museum you know, to see you know, the volume of activity, how diversified the sector you know, could be. So um, we want to work closely with the template that was submitted by ARCN because they had a template not made for Magdala, but it's a program they're looking at running for retirees. Uh, to have people that um, when they're done with, uh, they're retired, they have some, some activity that they can run as a business, uh, you know, with the chunk of capital they have, you know, when they, when they leave uh, service from their pension. And uh, from that template, we, we, we mirrored it to the resettlement plan. Because when you moving people from one location to another, they need to, uh, you know, to be seen to have progressed, to learn new things and to, to you are adding value, you know, to, to that. So when we saw all what the ARC had in terms of, you know, diversified sectors from fishery to, you know, cash, you know, crops and, you know, hydroponics, all kinds of, it's amazing, you know, it was a real eye-opener, you know, our visit. And um, so we're looking at the template. We, we want Airsen to have like a, the first one of this resettlement plan, have one of those uh, you know showrooms there, so that the community, the community for the resettlement will have that exposure to all those value chain of different uh, you know uh, cash crops etc. Even from both uh, local and commercial, international so. potential because the submissions are are, are, are very very. Uh, interesting it, the, because we've been doing this since 2018 so over this time period there's a lot of awareness that had gotten relevant stakeholders to key in so we see the rcn showroom for that value chain will showcase the entire potential for the for the cash uh, crop and different other segments in fact people are already coming in line with those potentials to start talking about offtake there was one of an interesting uh, proposal from a young lady who calls herself an urban farmer. And um, uh, she, she, she has a concept she calls the, the land bank, where you provide your land and they are ready to provide what you know, they will grow there and also take when they are done. So it's like an end-to-end -end perspective for the farmer now. We just don't want them to get lazy. But basically, they are interested in coming take your land your land is your account in the land bank and then they give an item that they want you know to be and they monitor the process with training supervision you know the, the, the entire and then take it off you from your price and leave you with whatever you want to do, hold back uh, we have such kind of proposals at the moment so we're quite excited we're looking forward
so looking at um, the dam now, how, which area and which area will be able to benefit from this dam? We know that, um, like we have this man dam here in um, Abuja. I've been to Osman Dam, you know, it's not much of a big dam, so to say. With this project, what what states or which areas, so to say, uh, will be able to benefit from from them? Okay, well, courtesy of the dam project, it has come with a number of value chain. And I would like to break that down from what we have been able to find out. Uh, like I said, uh, number one was the technical subcommittee in the technical working group. And that had showcased clearly through the project milestone about 55,000 job potential in about 23 different segments. Uh, as you will uh, uh, understand, from a resettlement perspective, when you say you resettle over 100,000 people, that's a mass housing project coming, you know, one, two bedroom, whatever. And that's a whole lot of workforce skills, training, etc. And that's why we got uh, NBTE, the National Board for Technical Education. It's in this I mean, uh, implementation subcommittee. And we're looking at, you know, relevant skill sets that we're promoting, uh, you know, for the workforce in areas of plumbing, you know, artisanal, mining, you know, uh, uh, electrical, Just you artisans. know, artisans, artisans, exactly, in the general uh, artisans. Mm. So uh, that is a huge potential for employment nationwide, and that's where we got NYC as the secretary for the technical committee, because that provides you a ready workforce, trainable, because I like to call them the positive side of NSAS, because no matter how <laughs> you don't get to put up an NYC t-shirt without some form of de de documentation. So we see this as a strategic interface, you know, uh, the, the, the NYC comes in batches so we have a pool that we can see from and run through you know this engagement with NBT and the relevant industrial training fund is part of our team power training institute is part of uh, the committee and the national board for technical education so that's job and employment courtesy of the dam project number two from okay before you move to number two I was to to ask how about those we know that there are some people that didn't go to the four walls of the classroom yet um, they have these skills they have this um, you know gift so yes. to say um, if you ask me I can dismantle my generator and you know couple it back I know that, yes I know that's one gift so if you're talking about uh, for somebody like that who has the gifts and <clears throat> you know can they also come in and then be trained as to uh, you know, that benefiting is a, from that is exactly where I'm gliding to. Okay. That's actually the number two. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it's good. It means we are getting along. <laughs> yeah. Ahead of me. yeah um, uh, I will now talk more specifically on that. Okay. Uh, that's why we we have NBTE on board. NBTE is the regulatory body for accredited these trainings at various you know levels, and uh, from their submission, we came across an interesting program they call the RPL. RPL is recognition of prior learning and this is exactly what okay. uh, you're talking about. Okay. You can you can dismantle your generator and put it back. That's some skill, something you've learned. So people coming to this program will pass through this RPL program. That means we are recognizing your prior learning and then we now put it into a mode that could be accredited and then we could say you can trust your generator with madame <laughs> <laughs> and actually in the northern part uh, being um, from uh, Joe from from a local content host community you know uh, point of view uh, this was a very interesting find that would open up the bracket to having NGOs participate in the local content uh, we have NYC because they profiled you know it's a government institution and you know it's been consistent and it is also having a mandatory one year service so you have that focus we believe is one of the most strategic decisions taken on the local content and um, also it has a national outlook because the local content has some you know a tricky narrative uh, when you see local content the nigerians feel you're talking about them but then when you come down the host region start to come in then the host state then the host community so you have to be strategic in such a way that it cut across then you have you know the north the south then you have the muslim then you have the you know all that mix but nyc just tidies all that up it is even gender sensitive it has you know uh, yes. yeah so we're very 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 pleased with uh, 
that role and we intend to focus on that. Actually, we want to task them beyond, uh, uh, you know, just uh, the coordination, but even inside the train the trainer kind of activities. So that will deal with your RPL program. And also, we have seen some strategic submissions from the like the Almajiri issue around the area, because that's that's those are the kind of people that fall under your category. Doing some menial works around, but no proper training. Yeah. And so from our from our uh, uh, analysis, we see the potential of mapping a lot of that into some trainable mode, uh, and uh, having them participate actively. Okay, uh, before I move to um, the uh, capacity of electricity that will be generated from this dam, uh, let me ask, what, what mode of security are you looking at? Because this is not okay. just, um, uh, you know, a small project. Yes, um, I wouldn't talk too much on security because I need to secure also the information. Okay. Yes, yes. But um, security is the first item on the PCA for the implementation of the project. And at the moment in this committee, we have the DSS in this committee, we have the Office of the Inspector General of Police, and also both the Army and the Air Force have uh, locations in the project area you know, at the moment. Uh, not particularly because of the project, but they're there already. But this additional two category of the DSS and the IG's office are members of this particular committee. The thinking is, um, um, first is an international project, and I want to commend also the Chinese uh, companies because they haven't given us much headache about worrying about security uh, even though uh, there's a sister project uh, the Gurara you know Zungiru project which is uh, just rounding up the you know, same uh, you know companies and um, there's been some challenges security wise uh, out there and uh, you will agree Mabila should be more to worry because it's in the northeast and it's about eight hour drive from the capital city so um, at the moment, we don't have much incidents. Uh, honestly, uh, the, the state government have been quite uh, proactive and supportive. And there have been just menial cases of uh, insecurity around uh, Taraba. The, the, it's more on the fire end. And overall, we believe this uh, administration has done a lot uh, for the Northeast, the coming of the Northeast Development Commission that has, you know, the committee that has transmitted into that. There's a lot of activity going there. You for Nigeria, I don't. Th I think so much has been talked about Mandela yes. over time, and uh, but I will just ice it up because uh, first I want to commend this administration because uh, all the talk you've been hearing in the past, the contract has not been signed until the coming of this president uh, Mohamed Bari administration. This is when the Mandela contract was actually signed as a contract. So we have a contract. That's strong commendation. Uh, number two. The presidential executive order number five coming at number five shows its top priority for Mr. President because that's the first five executive orders that he, you know, he issued, and um, that's literature. What I'm calling on Nigerians is to understand that um, it's a teamwork. Uh, we have got this policy so right, but we need to put our heads together, you know, to take it out of literature into an implementation mode, which is exactly what we're doing at the moment. So the presidential executive order, having the consideration of the contract signed at 5.792 billion US dollars, uh, targeting the 30% inclusion for local content, you're talking about a 1.71 billion dollar potential for the local content, which is the Nigerian economy. And um, in line with the coordination, of the consulting role we're, we're doing with the National Assembly, we had been able to have the leverage to deal with significant strategic ministries, departments and agencies in line with this potential, which led to having the Diaspora Commission involved and which also extended to our relationship with the Diaspora, which today you will agree with me. Uh, while I was compiling the, the, the local content list, which is an ongoing concern actually, at uh, several junctions I worried about you know the local company capacities because we have uh, you know even the local but companies like Julius Burger is local company, RCC you know the larger companies and then you know, some of these companies say Traco they are coming in you know as local content and I was looking at you know the real local local <laughs> so when the diaspora came up and uh, we were monitoring the reports coming out there we 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 noted that the Nigerian community diaspora in the United States have been profiled as the most educated immigrant community in the United States. So this interface, the local content policy with the Nigerian diaspora from wherever they are that are making this profile globally, 
we believe it's going to be a huge strategic, you know, uh, input uh, towards the economy and you know getting things done, you know, you know, you know more advanced delivery. Um, so um, looking at the electricity um, uh, generation, um, what what do we expect as a nation? Okay, the Mambila project is signed up to generate 3,050 megawatts. That is uh, almost doubling the current generation capacity of the entire country. Uh, so first you start to expect like a double capacity coming out of just one plant. That's number one. Number two, right from the host community point of view, which currently is off-grid, there's no you know electricity in Mambila. So partnerships with uh, agencies like... Uh, the REA, which is you know rural electrification agency, which is a member of this committee, and private sector interface or the PPP, is set to deliver about seven megawatts of solar power, which will automatically enhance activities in the host community. And this, we're also uh, working with the Northeast Governors Forum. Uh, we have run some activities and generated about a 62-page document about the potential of uh, you know that project across that particular region so we're putting interface with uh, structures like stair you know uh, out of Bauchi, which is a truck assembly plant because we're anticipating a lot of haulage activity you know across we're looking at uh, we're talking with um, lafarge you know they, they've written also to to participate because of the cement requirement cement. for the construction we, we you know activities around the value chain adamawa there's guyuk where review reports of the huge potential also out there and then more interestingly the mining the mining side you know of uh, the project from the reports of the geotechnic and the sub studies that have been carried out at various levels you know there is actually more to my better than just the electricity so there's a huge, huge, huge potential. But for the electricity, no doubt about it, the country shall expect a double capacity when Mambila is up, because that is what has been signed. Okay, so for the dam, you really didn't um, um, give me the answer I needed. Um, talking about how many, um, uh, how many states or so uh, are there to benefit from the project? It's the whole country that will benefit but if you're talking about the dam the dam is in Taraba state and by extension uh, it's not a it's not a um, dam that connects to another dam in another state actually if you're going to look at it from that uh, it's going to be more like from the back side of you which is the Cameroon side uh, you know coming uh, through uh, Nigeria which there's a lot that's been spoken about in line with the current uh, flood issues uh, it just goes to state further that uh, this project should not be delayed any further because it's the, 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 the flow coming from uh, the, the Cameroon side, you know, that puts the pressure on what comes and trickles and all the way down to Lokoja. So this dam is going to um, curtail? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, one of the negotiations for the dam was with Cameroon because they share border in line with uh, history. I'm sure you studied uh, what the plebiscite uh, negotiations were back then. No doubt. And that's why the project has been conceived way, the, way back. The late Sir uh, Dona, you know, visited that site as a premier because of this question you asked to, you know, analyze the effect of, you know, the water as released to the Cameroon uh, side. And uh, today it's called Sir Dona Local Government as a compliment because the Sir Dona, as the leader of the northern region, went to that location to talk about this project. And uh, so I believe the importance cannot be overemphasized. Uh, interestingly, in line with uh, the first uh, line activities for the local content, uh, we have uh, two programs like I uh, uh, mentioned. Uh, one is called the VDMN. VDMN uh, stands for V is Vier in the Mambila language. Vier means woman. And then D is for Depo. Depo means woman in full full day which is the lingua franca in the area and then m means mata that's in hausa woman which is also the lingua franca across the entire northeastern region and then n stands for nushu nushu is woman in chinese mm -hmm. so the vdmn program we're uh, looking at partnering with the national orientation agency in line with considerations of, uh, 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 of uh, concerns from the uh, 
Mabila indigenous and also uh, more like the, I would like to say the, <laughs> Mabila was like the wife of the um, the the Emir in the, the terms of the consultations. You know, she worried about a cultural shock that will come to the community in line of having new people and how will they communicate, how will they interact. So what we are looking at is in this orientation program with orientation agency and the VDMN program. Uh, there will be an interface between the local women and the Chinese women that are coming with their Chinese tea to meet the Highland tea to have a basis for conversation. So you'll end up having people in the community speaking Mandarin effectively and also the Chinese having the, the local languages you know, as a takeaway. Now that is the primary workforce for the host community engaging directly you know, as a fusion with the, with the, with the Chinese on the ground to you know, start building a workforce from the host community with the tea that will be a fusion of the highland tea potential and the chinese tea to give us the mambela tea this is our first agri activity with the host community and we believe it will be the most strategic you know to introduce the project from a local content perspective okay quickly uh, before we round it up um i wanted to ask you um the relocation of um this um you know locals is it going to be like relocating them out of the Mambila itself or is just going to be like moving from one side of the Mambila to the other? Yes, precisely. Uh, there has been uh, evaluations, you know, uh, site maps, you know, and also remunerations are all uh, being articulated by surveyors and uh, reports are coming in in terms of the resettlement plan. And uh, what we have as a framework there are going to be about five towns that will be relocated, but they will all be, of course, Tarawa State, but just away from the dam area, which is uh, over, you know, 100 square kilometer, a significant uh, in terms of size. Okay, so they right. will still be around, but away from, from the project the site.
of this week's episode of the program Agri Today. I remain your host, Amin Khadija Oluwato. I hope you enjoyed this session. <music>